Good morning, it's Wednesday, it's 8 a.m., and this is the live Q&A for Become Euphoric and Become Emboldened students. I go live every Wednesday at 8 a.m. to answer their top questions to live a happy alcohol-free life and achieve their most radical dreams on their heart. And if we haven't met yet before, because there's some new faces in here, my name is Karolina Zodkowolska, and I'm an alcohol-free life coach and author. Um, and I have been teaching women how to make alcohol insignificant in their lives for almost three years now. And what do I mean by that? I mean making alcohol insignificant in your life so that it is not holding any space in your brain. So this constant game of should I, shouldn't I, the mental rumination, feeling stressed about it, feeling guilty about it, all the mental anguish that we go through over a drink, I help women release from that, release from their desire from that, release from their cravings for that, and find peace in the idea of never thinking about it. Now to do this, you have to fundamentally reprogram your brain and really learn new things about your relationship with alcohol. But it's one of the most incredible self-discovery journeys you could ever go on, and you will learn so much about yourself and what you really truly want out of life. So when you're at a point in life and you want to reevaluate the role of alcohol, which basically means you're super intuitive, you're super brave, you're super health-minded, and you are willing to do what most people aren't willing to do. It's actually not something that's wrong with you. It's not pointing out any kind of flaw. It's showing you that you actually are listening to a voice that's telling you you're made for more. You know, I was talking to a neuroscientist from Harvard yesterday, and she just point blank, blank said, alcohol is poison. Alcohol is poison, and it's something we've been conditioned to drink ever since we were teenagers. It is literally the only the most conscious, aware people who are ever going to question this rite of passage in our lives. And that's you. You are here questioning the role of, the role of alcohol in our world and in your life because you know you want more. You know you want better. You know you deserve to feel alive every day. And you deserve to use your mental energy on the things that truly make you happy. What do I mean by that? The thing is, is that alcohol comes into our lives as a habit and we often use it as a placeholder for joy. So, you know, when you come home on a Friday night and you can't wait to have a drink to celebrate the weekend, alcohol becomes the most fun thing to do. You know, similarly on a vacation or even on a work day after a stressful day of work. We think that drinking is literally the most fun activity that we can have, whether it's a brewery trip or a wine tasting or a dinner party or something like that, because alcohol literally hijacks our brain and shoots out in an artificial level of dopamine. It's really the same phenomenon as any other drug, as any other like cocaine or heroin. It tells our brain that, oh my gosh, fireworks are going up in there and it releases this artificial sense of pleasure. The thing is, is that artificial sense of pleasure is super, super, like I said, artificial. It lasts a very short time and it quickly diminishes into very, very low, low points in our brain. And the fact is that because our brain gets so used to these peaks of artificial pleasure, it starts to become numb to the recognition of true pleasure, of true joy. And the thing is, is when we think that alcohol makes us happy or that a drink relieves us or that a drink makes us feel better or that a drink will make this vacation more fun, we actually are missing what would truly bring us joy in that moment, what would truly organically give us joy, what would truly organically make us happy in that moment. And I just want to shout out to Paula. So good to see you. She says, I want more. I want more. I want to know what truly makes me happy. I want to know what organically gives me joy. I want to know what I'm capable of without this toxin in my system, right? And that's the beautiful thing about you being here today. And I'm so excited for this question I got from a Become Emboldened student who is looking to radically change her life, radically up-level in so many areas of her life. Because as the status quo changes in your relationship with alcohol and you stop settling for poor sleep and hangovers and the stress of dra over drinking or anything like that, you start to want better for every area of your life. You start to get the pride and the confidence to know, wow, anything can change. If I cannot drink for 20 days or 30 days or 50 days, what else could I do? If I could not drink for, 
you know, and, and really start changing my views and thoughts and beliefs around alcohol, well, maybe I could do it in another area of my life. And so I love this question of really knowing that she wants so much more for her life and she wants to really, really, really make changes, but also not knowing what they are. She says she feels stuck and isn't sure what to do. You know, and as you take your break from alcohol and as you, you know, go one month, two months, three months, this is a normal part of the journey. It's a normal part of the journey to start questioning what's next for you, to start questioning Am I truly happy and satisfied in my career? Are my relationships where I want them to be? Do I want more friends in my life? Do I want more connections in my life? Um, how can I share more love and more knowledge and more, how can I have more growth in my life? And so oftentimes we're poised at this place where we start to question whether the things we were doing in the status quo, in the loop, in the way that we were living our lives as drinkers is really as satisfying to us anymore. And I love this question too, because it then shows us that the fundamental thing we need to remember about our journey with changing our relationship with alcohol and uploading our lives in any area of our lives is the question of having faith over fear, is the question of having trust over doubt. It's the question of knowing that everything is unfolding for us for a reason, and that if we're just active agents in our lives, we will co-create a beautiful experience for ourselves. And so if you've taken a break from alcohol, maybe you're three months, four months, and you're starting to feel questions rise on your heart of, you know, what's next for me? Am I truly happy doing what I'm doing? Is there more for me? Should I, are there dreams on my heart that I've always wanted to accomplish? Or maybe I know that there's more dreams, but I'm not actually sure what they are. I have some tips for you. And so I just want to share a little bit about my background in case you're new here today. You know, when I took a break from alcohol, I used to work, a, uh, it wasn't really a corporate job, but it was a nine to five. I worked in the higher education system and I worked a nine to five for almost 10 years. I was in a top business school and I thought I found meaning in it because we, you know, taught a lot about social responsibility and social innovation. But at the end of the day, I couldn't wait for the weekend. I couldn't wait for the weekend so I could drink. <laughs> and that's how I lived my life. I didn't drink during the week, but I really couldn't wait for each weekend so I could let loose. And what I fundamentally didn't realize about that pattern was that I was literally couldn't wait to escape that Monday through Friday experience. It wasn't satisfying to me. It wasn't fulfilling to me. And so the weekend was the, the only highlight of my, of my week and I lived in that thinking that that's really normal. And, and of course, we all have those sayings like, can't wait till the weekend. And it's kind of normal to live that way. But I had to ask myself, why? Why am I not being fulfilled in what I'm doing? Is this nine to five maybe not as fulfilling to me or my true calling? And I knew deep down it wasn't. I knew deep down I wanted to have a freedom lifestyle. I knew I wanted to travel. I knew I wanted to be my own boss. I knew I wanted to make an impact, a real visceral impact, not just with words, you know, but like really making a difference in people's lives. And so by around four, five, six months alcohol-free, I decided to launch a business. I decided to launch a business and become an alcohol-free life coach. Now the journey to find that success took a while, but I kept taking one baby step after another. And I decided to write a book. And I kept growing my business and I kept growing my business and I kept getting more success and more clients. And then I decided to leave my day job. And since then, my life has exploded in the best ways possible. I got an incredible book deal from HarperCollins. My book, Euphoric, Ditch Alcohol and Gain a Happier, More Confident You, will be out on bookshelves on January 2022. Pre-sale available this fall. I doubled my income from my past job. I literally get to make the impact I've always dreamed of making viscerally. Every day I get testimonials from people who say I've changed their lives and I get to actually work with clients and really see the transformation in front of me about how women can achieve their greatest dreams when they put down what no longer serves them. I did things that I thought I could never do, like random things like run a half marathon. I never thought I was an athlete. I didn't think I would, like my heart would even be able to make it to that. I launched a podcast. I started speaking on video like this. You know, I'm an introvert. And so to come on a video like this and be able to share my message with the world was groundbreaking. 
And I slowly started to realize that the dreams that I had weren't some kind of fantasy. That if I was just in this right mind frame and truly believed in myself, I could go after this. It all stemmed from changing my relationship with alcohol. And so Become Emboldened is a program to help you, after you've already had a few months alcohol free, truly find the dreams on your heart and go after them and give you all the tools and strategies you need to go after them. And so if you're feeling stuck though and not sure what those dreams are, I want to talk a little bit about how you can find that. And one of the biggest principles that this rests on is actually just finding more joy in your life, finding what feels good to you. You know, there's sayings by some famous, you know, uh, writers and philosophers that we can make a huge living out of anything we're passionate about because the thing that we bring to the table, whether or not that's a lucrative field or not, is our passion, is our passion is our greatest gift. Our passion can be our greatest, greatest gift. And even something like achieving a dream doesn't necessarily have to line up with a career goal. Achieving a dream could be, you know, maybe getting involved in a nonprofit. Maybe it could be some kind of bucket list item like swimming with dolphins. Maybe it's visiting Bali and getting a yoga teacher certification. I mean, it doesn't have to be a change in your career, but it could be fulfilling those goals on your heart of we have this one lifetime on this planet. This one lifetime that maybe, if we're lucky, we'll live 90 years here. It's going to go by so fast. It's going to go by in the blink of an eye. And in that time that we have here on this earth, what do we truly want to do? What do we truly want to see? What do we want to be? What do we want to have? What do we want to accomplish? What do we want our legacy to be? And I know it can feel really daunting to have just one legacy. Like it's supposed to be this big mission and this big thing that... You know, we come in and and we have all the answers and we're the experts and now we do this, this and that, but it doesn't always have to be that. You know, I think when we are finally awakened to our biggest purpose, our biggest purpose usually looks the same. Our biggest purpose centers around bringing more light, more love, and more joy into the world. Whatever that looks like, whatever that looks like for you. And so I feel like I found my purpose as an alcohol-free life coach and author where I get to touch literally hundreds and thousands of people and help them question their relationships with alcohol and get them empowered about living alcohol-free and then get them empowered about living their biggest dreams. And that feels very, very concrete to me. But maybe a dream on your heart has nothing to do with becoming some kind of thought leader or coach. Maybe it's having more experiences, more beautiful experiences in your life, like a bucket list. Like if literally you were going to die in five years and you've made peace with that, let's not focus on that part. What would you really want to do in these next five years of your life? I mean, would you completely just quit your job and just move somewhere and travel the world? Would you want to get involved in nonprofits and travel to Africa? And I mean, God knows what, what would you do in the time here? And some of these can be really guiding questions about what we really want to do. And sometimes we don't have to leave behind everything to start to chase a dream. So for example, you know, there was that phenomenon, the Eat, Pray, Love book and movie that came out where this woman literally like puts her life in a box and goes and travels the world to Italy, India, and Bali. And sometimes we think like, if I could just have that experience, if I could just have such a radical departure from my everyday, you know, I would be happy. But sometimes we can have these mini versions of that. Sometimes we can have just baby versions of that. If your dream is to travel the world, and yet right now that seems impossible because you have a nine to five and kids and not enough money to do it, like what about going on a weekend road trip? What about going on a two week vacation? Like, what about living your dream just a little bit? If your dream is to, like, hike the PCT for six months and really be out in nature that whole time and have a just a whole lifestyle revolution and, and spiritual awakening there, why not go on a weekend hiking through, like, hike through? What is it called? Yeah, hiking through. No, that's not it. Where you actually keep hiking and sleep and stuff with your sleeping bag. I mean, we can live our dreams just a little bit and do the things that we feel are calling to us. 
So if you feel stuck and you don't know what to do, I would circle on, I would make a list, first of all, of the things that bring me joy. And these could be things that are super small. Like if you love the taste of a ripe raspberry in your mouth, write down ripe raspberries. If you love walking through a meadow and feeling the the grass beneath your feet, write that down. If you love listening to classical music, like this beautiful piece by Vivaldi just moves you, write that down. If you love the feeling of drinking a hot chocolate in front of a fire, (coughs) write that down too. And I want you to center on bringing more of that joy into your life. Having more of these beautiful, sensual, tactile experiences in your day. So that as you, (coughs) excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. As you, (coughs) as you live your life, you actually imbue more joy and passion into it. Another really great starting question is asking what you like to do as a kid. And whatever you like to do as a kid could have some clues for you as what you might want or like to do as an adult. So for example, I loved reading books as a kid and then I loved playing this like um, make-believe game where I was a teacher. And I was both the teacher and the student because I was playing by myself. And it's so funny that that was like one of my (laughs) biggest pastimes as a kid because now what I do is I, I learn for a living, I read books, I take courses, I do personal growth for a living, I go to conferences, I get coached. And then I take all of that information and I pass it down to my clients and to my students. And so it's so fascinating that one of the biggest like games I used to play as a kid is now something I do for a living. (coughs) Maybe you loved riding your bike as a kid and you haven't ridden a bike in years. Maybe it's time to just rent a bike this weekend. You don't even have to buy a bike, just rent a bike this weekend. So try to get clues from your childhood of what you really enjoyed and see if you can just reenact them in little baby ways. Um, Another really good idea is to literally take this idea of (coughs) what have you always wanted to do, be, or have in your lifetime and make it separate. Make it separate bucket lists and try to think of 15 ideas for each one. So 15 ideas of what you want to do. This could be random stuff like I want to take tango lessons. I want to try paddle boarding. I want to... (coughs) Um, I don't know, read a hundred books. I want to get yoga teacher certified and just write down a bucket list of all these things you want to do in your lifetime and then have our actual like material positions. And it could be have like, like obviously things don't make us happy, (coughs) but maybe it could be like, I want to have a beautiful safari in Africa Or I want to have like a gorgeous yoga studio in my house. You never know because even the things that you want to have could help point you into knowing what you want more of out of your life. And the third one's who do you want to be? You know, being is maybe like, I want to be fluent in French. I want to be a yoga teacher. I want to be a thought leader. I want to be a coach. I want to be with animals more often. And so just writing a bucket list of all these things that bring you joy or that you think would be interesting just getting clarity on it, just writing it down on paper. Sorry, let me get a a cough drop. And so as you put your bucket list together, I want to give you some, just some space to breathe and to know it's okay that you don't have it figured out yet. You know, like this idea that we're supposed to know what we need, want to do with our lives has been pushed on us since we're 18. I don't know what 18 year old really has the answers to that question, but knowing that your intuition is always there to guide you is always there to show you the right next right step and that the universe is actually this magical place, this magical place that is there to support you and is there to give you signs. And so signs, if you listen close enough, are there all around you all the time. And maybe you need to actually get a little silent and have some spaces of solitude in nature to be able to hear those signs. So maybe this weekend you go on a hike somewhere, somewhere beautiful around your hometown or drive somewhere for an hour. Taking a solo road trip is one of the fastest ways, by the way, to have some incredible insights and epiphanies into your life. And just go on a beautiful walk in nature. 
and allow yourself to bring a journal and sit, you know, outside and let yourself just be still. Let yourself just be silent and let let the voices and the signs around you communicate with you. You know, there's this idea in manifestation that there's signs all around us. Numbers, colors, flowers, animals, um, anything really that's relevant to you. That when you make a meaning out of it, when you make meaning out of seeing the number, you know, seven, eight, nine, for example, there is meaning behind it. It's telling you you're on the right path. It's telling you that, you know, you're, you're discovering the next right step for yourself. So going back to leaning into trust and faith is always important because trust and faith knows that the journey is unfolding for you. The journey is unfolding for you and the answers will come because you're not going to stop searching. And that's the beautiful thing of personal growth. We don't stop growing. We don't stop making progress. We don't stop looking for answers. Sure, I found my business and my career and the way I want to make a purpose and difference in this lifetime. But there are so many answers that I'm still searching for that are unraveling before me. And I will be on this lifetime journey of going on this self-discovery path. Because it's not just for me. It's not just the selfish, like, let me enlighten myself kind of path. But I become a better human to the people around me because of it. I become a better person and a better leader and a better wife and a better daughter and a better sister and a better friend to the people around me because of it. And that's what matters at the end of the day. And that's one last question I want to leave you with. So if you're feeling stuck and you're not sure what you want, I also want to ask you, what do you really care about when it comes to, you know, different social issues in the world? Because ultimately, like, we are here to help improve the world. We are here to bring more light, love, and consciousness into the world. And that can look, like, different from one person to the next. But maybe there's some more answers lying for you in the things that you care about. You know, some people care so deeply about the environment and it both troubles them and is something that gives them so much inspiration to want to help and change. Some people are more called to human rights abuses and they're just so impassioned about making sure everyone has the dignity and is treated fairly. Some people are really called to stand up for women's equality. I mean, and some of us care about all these things, of course, but maybe some social causes pull at your heart a little bit more than others. And those could be some answers in what you want to do. You know, women's equality has always been super important to me. And it's interesting, but I kind of came about it in a, in a different way. You know, instead of maybe like helping disadvantaged women in this country or that country have more economic opportunity, I now take that calling and help women who have huge potentials but are are blocking their own potential with alcohol, unblock that. So that they can go on to be the powerhouses that they need to be in their communities. So that they can go on and be the leaders that they're meant to be. And that gives me chills to think of how that social cause I've always cared about kind of manifests in what I do today. So there's always clues around you. Take some pressure off the idea that you don't know what to do. It's okay. Follow what feels good. Follow what brings you joy. Follow what feels good and makes you feel spiritually connected to something bigger than you. Have moments of stillness and solitude and in nature to listen to those answers about what the next right step is for you. And it could be the teeniest, tiniest baby step. It could be the teeniest tiny baby step telling you, hey, I think you should sign up for that class. I think you should enroll in that class. I think you should take those photography lessons. I think you should, you know, reach out to that mentor. You never know what the next right step will look like, but we have to be willing to hear it and we have to be open to it might not look like our original plans. So I hope that was helpful. I apologize, I'm a little under the weather, I'm recovering from a cold, but all is getting better, and I'm just so grateful that the universe connected us today, and that you were here today, and I hope this answer is helpful, and if any of you are ever struggling in this area, you know, personal coaching is one of my favorite vehicles of massive change, 
of really helping someone find ahas and direction and purpose in their life. Because the thing is, I don't just help women leave behind alcohol in that beautiful space that's left behind. I help them achieve their greatest dreams. I help them discover what those dreams are and have the audacity to go after them. So if you ever feel like you want to talk to me or set up a one-on-one coaching call, I'd love to hear from you. And I'm super excited because in not next week, but the week after that, we have the Think Like a Non-Drinker Challenge. It's a challenge I host once a year, and it's one of my most favorite events. Uh, It's a four-day challenge that we'll be hosting this year where we're literally going to imagine what the world would look like without alcohol and just minus all of that negative baggage out of our brain. So if alcohol doesn't exist, how would we live our lifestyles? How, what, how would we wake up in the morning? How would our health routine look like? What would our relationships look like? I want us to really start dreaming in this reality of not like, oh, I can't drink or I have to quit or something like that. But what if alcohol just wasn't around? What would your life look like? What would your dreams look like? And we'll start with some incredible, incredible homework, some really cool giveaways and a lot of fun in that challenge. If you're not signed up, you have to be signed up to get all the homework, to get all the visualizations, and to be part of the giveaways. So make sure you actually formally sign up at becomeeuphoric.com slash challenge. Okay, I'm going to leave that link below here today. And let me know if you have any questions. I can't wait to see you there. All right, bye-bye.